احمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على الائه ونعمائه ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له الها واحدا احدا فردا صمدا قيوما ونشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وال محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على خلفاء نبيك وأوصيائه وأهل بيته وأحبته علي أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجمين وعلى البضعة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وعلى سبطي نبي الرحمة وسيدي شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين عليهم السلام وعلى علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويوم يعط الظالم على يديه يقول يا ليتني اتخذت مع الرسول سبيلا يا ويلتا ليتني لم أتخذ فلانا خليلا لقد أضلني عن الذكر بعد إذ جاءني وكان الشيطان للإنسان خذولا صدق الله العلي العظيم The influence of friends on the individual or the family or the person is unmatched and rivaled. It's a very deep and magical influence. Sometimes parents work on their children for 20 years. A friend comes within three months and he will undo all this work and destroy this work and he will reshape the character of his friend. They, are, they do amazing work in being able to brainwash their friends. And they become facets. Some people, they really become very, very deeply fascinated, infatuated under the deep influence of their friends. This is why we have to be extra careful in choosing our friends those that you want to spend your time with them because whether you like it or not they will impact your life they will draw the direction for you in this life even if you deny even if you say no in the beginning i'm not going to have this person influencing me after a period of time slowly slowly the influence maybe you don't notice but others they notice It's going to appear on you, on your lifestyle, on your temperament, on your behavior, on your character. And therefore, I said this many times here, it is always important that we are good with people. You greet them, you ask about them, you connect with them, but don't take any person as a friend. Not any person or all people are worthy to be your friends. Friends are something else. We have regular society, we have acquaintances, people that we greet, we speak to at school, in the market, outside, inside, but then we have a friends that we have to select. Those have to be of a special character, not just any person. Sometimes we say, oh my friends, but we really don't mean it. Real friendship, is even bigger than a brotherhood and sisterhood, higher. So we have to be careful in choosing them. And in your friend, you have to find the three important characters, three important traits. 
And these are mentioned by Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu Amir al-Mu'mineen says, As-Sadiq al-Saduq, the true friend is the one who has these three characters. If really he does not have, forget about, forget about calling him a friend, call, call him a brother in the community, a member of the community. Call him a dear one to me, it's okay. Don't take him as a friend. Friends are special, very special. He says the first one, الصديق الصدوق من نصحك في عيبك The one who provides you the true advice when you do, when you do wrong. عيبك is the faults, the defects. And we have defects. We all have defects. So he is the one who comes to you and he tells you with full honesty and truth. Because he loves you, because he cares about you, because he looks at your progress, his own progress, at your failure, his own failure. This is why he cares about you. So he comes and he tells you what's wrong with you. And you have to accept that. You should not get hurt because he tells you that this something is true. And you should thank him when he comes. You should thank your friend when he comes and tells you there is a problem in this area. You have to revisit this area in what you said, in what you did, in your behavior, in your relationship with your family, with your friends, with your neighbors. You have to accept that. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wa salam says, خَيْرُ الْأَصْحَابِ الْمُعِينُ عَلَىٰ طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ The best friend, the friends are good. But the best among them, the one who gets you closer to God. What does that mean? It means when you do something wrong, he comes and he does amrun bil ma'roof wa an al munkar. He will enjoin the good and forbid you from evil. So don't get disturbed. Don't get annoyed. You have to ask, you have to thank him for that. This is number one. Man nasahaka fi aybik. But what we see is, is the opposite. That when you give an advice to someone, wholeheartedly, with full honesty, with full integrity, with full love, they misinterpret that, unfortunately. They misinterpret that. This is number one. The second, When you are absent, when you are not in that session, he defends you. He protects your back. Some people, he smiles in your face, he holds you, he secures, you know, your, your ribs are almost broken, you know, when he hugs you, alhamdulillah. But then as soon as you are missing, you are outside, you leave, he backstabs you. He starts his rumors against you. He starts things that are true, untrue, real, not real. This is not sadiq. Don't take this as a front. Yes, greet him. I'm not saying declare war against him. Treat, uh, respect him and greet him, but don't take him as a friend. Don't take this person as a friend. Because this person is going to betray you. This person either, either has sickness or jealousy or something like that. And then people come to you, families and individuals, and they say, why this person is talking against you? Isn't he your friend? You hear from people that this person, wherever he goes, he speaks against you. This is not a true friend. The true friend is the one that stands up for justice and truth. When someone attacks you and you are not there, he will defend you. He will be your attorney. He will defend you. He will say, no, this is not true. He is not here, but his Lord is here. Allah is here. Allah can listen. Allah can see. And thus, the hadith says, even with the closest of friends, give him his full, give him your full love, but don't give him your full trust. Don't give him your full trust. Sometimes a friend, close friend, will turn against him one day, and he will use all these. 
to put them on WikiLeaks, you know, <laughs> all your records on WikiLeaks. So don't trust people. Give uh, love people, but don't trust. Don't trust a hundred percent. There is only small percentage of people that you really can trust their wisdom and their integrity and their honesty and your secret with them is safe. Only half a percent, even less than that. Even less than that. The rest, don't trust. Give love, give respect, but don't trust. You have to distinguish between the two. Between giving love and respect, but not giving full trust. The third, Amir al-Mu'mineen says, the third equality of the friend, وَآثَرَكَ عَلَى نَفْسِكَ آثَرَكَ This is very hard. To give preference to you over his own self. To sacrifice. Sometimes when there is money, and you need the money, but you know your friend is in more need. You take the money away from you, you give it to him. This is ethar. This is sacrifice. He does not let you down. He does not let you down. He, according to the hadith, and la yuslimuka inda nakabat. He does not betray you, desert you, abandon you at the time of need. When you are in need, you start calling him. His phone is shut. He does not answer. He's missing because he knows you are in need. This is not a front. Don't waste your life with such people. Don't waste. Your life is precious. We are here. For a number of days. These number of days we have to live, live them in peace. If we want to live in peace in these few days, we have to have peaceful people around us. Not troublemakers. Peaceful, quality people, quality friends. When you surround yourself, even if you have two quality friends, it's better than 200 non-equality friends. Two, even one. They will stand with you. They will support you. This is the wasiyah of Sayyiduna wa Mawlana al-Imam, Amir al-Mu'mineen, alayhi wa salatu wa salam. Please join me in reciting Amman Yujib dua for many people who are in critical conditions. But inshallah, through dua, I have a friend who came to me last night. Last night, when we finished, I was about to leave. His wife was diagnosed with cancer. He said, Sayyid, I want to say something to you. And you have to say this to the people. It was only the dua of the mu'mineen who saved my wife's life. So do not underestimate the dua. Never. Never underestimate the power of dua. So please pray for those who are really in need for your dua during these holy moments. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءَ 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 يَا اللَّهُ كنا على مرضانا بالشفاء والعافية المرضى المنظرين اللهم ألبسهم ثوب الصحة والعافية اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجعل كلمة الإسلام هي العليا اللهم وحد كلمة المسلمين والمؤمنين على الخير والصح والصلاح والبر والتقوى يا أرحم الراحمين وعجل في فرج قائدنا وإمامنا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد